a welcome along to the Sporting Life Time for Weekend Preview. David, all delighted to be joined by Andy McLaren and Ben Linfoot in the studio to look ahead to, fingers crossed folks, a super Saturday. Uh, we've got one of the big betting races of the jump season, the Covel Gold Cup at Newbury. Ben, the big t topic in the build-up to this has been the ground, the Thursday Hippopotamus draining it of all water. By the time we're recording this, we've seen two races on the Friday card, one over fences, a quicker time than the hurdles event earlier. Jockey saying on the quicker side of good ground. How significant will that be on Saturday? Yeah, it's really significant, Dave. Um, like you say, we're a couple of races on the Friday. The time suggests that it's on the fast side of good, the chase course at Newbury. That's unlikely to change before the Coral Gold Cup because Saturday showers are forecast for after racing. So I think you can rule out the sloggers, the horses who need three and a half miles, and there's a few in there. Uh, the horses who need soft, heavy ground, there's a few in there. So yeah, um, really important when you're factoring your, your bets on Saturday to look for those good ground horses, possibly look for horses who are going to be on the speed as well. We've seen this in this race over the years. It's tough to come from off the pace in the Coral Gold Cup. It might be even tougher this year with that ground. And there's slightly less runners than normal. It doesn't make, make it much less competitive. We're going to have a look at the, the time form ratings graphic. One thing that struck me, we've got three horses with P's actually named, significant, uh, suggesting they're capable of progress. And one of them's at the top of the shot. Yeah, you've got Limilos at the top there. He absolutely bolted up at Bangor on his debut for Dan Skelton. And he's only got a £4 penalty for that. So you can, he does look well in. But my concern with him would be that came on heavy ground. And like Ben mentioned, I think you're going to need horses who really go on this good ground. And you've got remastered back for more off the same mark as when he fell out, f fell four out in this race last year. Our power, a bit unexposed still at this trip. And then Korak Rambler and Jericho Rock, who contested the ultimate at Cheltenham Festival. Let's have a look at one or two video clues there. One horse that Matt Brocklebank is sweet on, it was his anti-post value bet selection for this race, is Lord Accord. We've got video footage of him here, Ben, finishing second to Frodon in the Badger Beard. Did you like this one? Can you see where Matt's coming from? I did like this run and I think Matt is sitting on a nice ticket at 33 to 1. This horse is around 14 to 1, 12 to 1 now and he's an improving chaser for Neil Mulholland who is a master with a staying handicap chaser. We've seen that over the years, including in the Coral Gold Cup. He nearly won it with Carol's Destre a few years ago. Lord Accord on the far side there. I think he would have got closer to Frodon with a better jump at the last here. You'll see he just makes a significant mistake and it really halts his momentum and he coasts home in second. I think you can upgrade that run a little bit because he was probably a little bit better than that. I do think you need to improve from the Badger Beers coming into a Coral Gold Cup. It's obviously a better race and he will need to, but he could do because since the cheap pieces have got on, uh, gone on, he's got better and better and he's got a chance. So have a look at some Cheltenham Festival form here. We touched upon Corrick Rambler there when we saw the ratings. Here he is winning the Ultima uh, in dramatic style, but there's another horse in front as we join them, or just about in front, that interests you, Andy. Yeah, it's Jericho Rock there. Just, he's just leading there under Tom Scudamore as they come around the bend. And he got picked off later on by this late, remarkable late surge from Korak Rambler. But I expect Jericho Rock to turn the form around on Saturday just because he gets a £6 pull in the weights with Korak Rambler. And these patient tactics that Korak Rambler normally has, I, like Scoop mentioned, I just can't. It's going to be really hard for horses to make up ground from the back. And. With Tom Scudamore, you know, he's got a really good record on this race. He made all the cloth cap a couple of years ago, and I want him, I'm hoping for the same tactics from, it, from him on Jericho Rock. And right at the bottom of the weight, I think he's going to be pretty hard to knock up the frame. I think the thing with Kovac Ramblin with me as well, it won't necessarily hold up tactics with me. He can go off the bridle early doors. I think if you are going to hold up, make an impact in this, you need to be on the, on the snaff to do so. Ben, I've gone pa pa birdie, birdie, birdie. What am I? You are three under three five, Dave. A great start to your round. Thank you. And so is this horse winning the Hampton Novices Chase at Warwick for Paul, Nic Paul Nichols and the McNeil family. Three under five in action here, Ben. How big a player is he? Yeah, he's a player. He's a player. He's your archetypal sort of Coral Gold Cup horse, isn't he? When you think um, second season novice, lightly raced. Is he ahead of his handicap mark? This was a good effort this day at Warwick. It was a small field. He was carrying a penalty and he did it nicely. He jumped well this day. He doesn't always jump as well as he did at Warwick, uh, which would just concern me a little bit going into a, a race like this. But he's, he's off 151. Um, I'm not sure if he's well handicapped or not. He ran in the Brown Advisory at the Cheltenham Festival and was well beaten. And normally you come from that race and you're a big player in a, in a Coral Gold Cup, but you'd want to be uh, finishing a little bit closer to the principles than he did really. But he's had a hurdle spin and you know he's going to be fit and firing for Paul Nichols. And he is one of the, an obvious one towards the top of the market. There's, there's about eight co-favourites around eight to one. It's that type of race and he's one of them, but he's, uh, he's one for the shortlist. 
another who had a spin-over hurdles, remastered Andy, and he surprised connections by winning at Aintree. They, they didn't think he was ready this day. We've got footage of that too. He looked unlucky in this race last year as well. Lots of people putting him up to make it go one time better this time. What sort of chance would you give him? Yeah, I'm not so convinced he was as unlucky as what a lot of people think last year. When he came down four out, I think it was far too early to say he'd have won. And if you look at his form after that race, there's not much there to convince you that he would have went and won. I mean, he came back here, this was his first run at Aintree after a wind up. And he finished his race out pretty well here, so maybe that wind up has helped him with his finishing effort. But off the same mark, I don't think he's particularly well handicapped myself. As a man who was, you know, which one of the pipe pair you won, don't you, Andy? Yes, I like a man. The one that was miles behind him this day. <laughs> well, that's the thing. He was expected to run slightly better, wasn't he? Although he thought they'd both need it. Would you take it as a positive, Ben, that we Masters won there? Would you be worried it might have had a, a harder race than they originally anticipated? I, I wonder if he's a horse to get sort of first time out, and he might he might bounce from that and, and regress. Would be would be my way of looking at it, and I do think out of the pipe pair, he would be the one that would want much softer ground remastered. Jericho Rock, we saw him at the Cheltenham Festival on ground towards uh, good. He he could get away with it, but remastered probably needs several showers. Though we've got footage, the final video clue for the Carvel Gold Cup. It's Ansam in a handicap hurdle at Newbury, a horse that's very much on your own shortlist. He's the top of my shortlist, Dave. Uh, there he is in the nose band uh, for Evan Williams in the cool Cody colours. And um, this day he was well in on his, on his chasing form, he was £7 lower than his chasing mark and he was fully entitled to go and do what he did, but it was evidence that he likes Newbury, we've seen evidence of that before, he's run well here a few times and uh, I think he's a player because he's, he's a likely race chaser for a, for a good target trainer, um, his best run came at Ascot in a handicap chase that uh, it was a good race that day and he, and he sat just on the shoulder of the leaders and uh, it was good ground as well so he's got, he's got a lot in his favour towards the bottom of the weights and Sam um, and uh, he's, he's already had a spin around Ascot in a, in a handicap chase this season I think he'll come on loads for that and I think he's a player. So we know your two selections I think you're both over complicated mm -hmm. we had the time form graphic come up with the horse top rated with a P Lamilos I know one or two Andy's pointing out he thinks he might want Softer ground, well, but he's he won on heavy ground three times, Dave. He's, he's also won on good ground and good to soft ground. But he's a strong traveller, isn't he? Strong yeah. traveller. I mean, it's, I think the races just happened to be on heavy ground. Banger wasn't heavy ground when they declared him. It just turned that way with, with heavy rain. Skeleton team flying. Let me. Four well in. I mean, he's he's the. Oh, that's that's why I took. He's, <laughs> he's, he's the obvious one. I th who do you think is going to go off favourite? Because it's a really tight market. Eight horses around eight to one. I think we've mentioned the two. I think Lamilos and Jericho Rock are going to be fighting yeah. our favouritism. I think, and it's a fascinating race, isn't it? It might not be a vintage renewal, but it's a, an intriguing one. It is a vintage renewal at Newcastle of the Betfair fighting fifth hurdle because Nicky Henderson is running both big guns. Constitution Hill ruled out at Ascot last week because of the ground, rerouted here to take on Epiton. Ben, this is a big day for Constitution Hill. It doesn't sound it's going to be a long odds on favour. And we're going to get the time from ratings graphic up here. He, he's miles clear on all ratings but this is something different it's a, a speed test like he hasn't really faced so far and he's in against open company for the first time can anything go wrong well something can always go wrong i mean look at a plutard last week a, a haydock in the betfair chase he was equally as far clear on ratings on his cheltenham gold cup win and uh, and previous betfair chase win constitution hill 14 pounds clear with a p attached to his name as well 188p and um, he's just he's exciting isn't he he's, he's the one British hurdler everyone's excited about after what he did in the Sky Bet Supreme at last year's Cheltenham Festival we didn't see it last week at Ascot we've gone through that all week but we get to see him here at Newcastle over two miles and it would be a seismic shock if he was beaten um, I'm really looking forward to seeing him it's, it's hard to think what can go wrong you've got not so sleepy who's going to go out and make the run in ground conditions absolutely fine um, I think this is one two to seven shot we're all going to be cheering home. And Andy is the highest rated novice hurdler in the history of time for 50 years. Yeah. They've, they've not gone as, with a bigger number for a novice hurdler. It's all because of this performance at Cheltenham, this win in the Skybet Supreme. And you don't see horses with having a Supreme a Skybet Supreme in the bag as far out as this horse did, did he? This video clip is just remarkable. Yeah, and it's worth remembering the horse behind him here is John Bond, who we've seen come out and absolutely ball up in novice chase at Warwick the other week and that in that novice chase that John Bond won it was one of the highest time figures recorded, recorded by time form for a novice chaser in the last five seasons so the form is we know the form's really strong and I mean look let's look at that he's just he's, Nico's not even had to really go for him and he's just coming up the hill yeah I mean it'd be it'd be it's jump racing so things can go wrong but yeah 
it's not a race I'll be having a bet in, but I really hope he goes and puts in another performance like this and really gets the juices flowing for the National Hunt season. And Epitant the stable, mate. She's won this one. She's dead heated last year with Not So Sleepy. She finished second to Honeysuckle of Champion Hurdle last year and would have been closer, but for mistake at the last. We're going to get an interesting line here. Time form have got Constitution Hill above um, Honeysuckle on, on ratings ahead of their potential big clash in March. This is the first time to try to get some collateral form together. Yeah, it is. Um, I... <sighs> I, I want to take on Epitant this weekend in terms of if you're looking for a bet for the race um, because if Constitution Hill is there tanking and, and is a, a clear winner, is Epitant really going to be ridden to, to chasing her? I'm not sure she is. And when you look at her, her wins in this race, one of them not so sleepy, unseated at the first and took out Silver Streak and it ended, it ended up being a three-runner race. And last year she dead heated with not so sleepy in, in the Newcastle Fog that day, if you remember, and uh, yeah, I just I wouldn't look at her wins in this race and think, oh, this is a tough test for Constitution Hill. Um, I think it's it, it could be anything but really, and so I'd be looking elsewhere in like the forecast and without markets. Go on then, you've teed yourself up. I've teed myself up for Tommy's Oscar. <laughs> Dave, who I think is an underrated horse, he's twenty-eight to one in the outright market for the race. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be looking at that against Constitution Hill, but you can get prices north of seven to one in the without market, and looking at it, possible forecast bets as well. We know this horse is um, a really good, consistent hurdler over two miles, and I think he's in really good nick. When you look at his run at Cheltenham last time in the novice chase behind Banbridge, he was a little bit unlucky not to finish a bit closer that day. Danny Menemin just went for a gap up the inside and just found a little bit of troubling running coming round the home turn and uh, he was probably beaten a little bit further than he should have been. I think that form will prove throughout the season to be really strong. Interesting coming back to hurdles in this company. I don't think he can beat the hot fav, but I think he can chase him home in second. Weekend best bet time, Andy. We know you, Tom, so you're off on the front in the Coval Gold Cup. What, what's, your, what's your best weekend bet? Washington, for me, in the 155 at Newbury. Um, he's a horse. I backed him at Ascot on his comeback. It was over two miles, and I was a bit disappointed at the time, but I think in hindsight, he probably needed the run, and stepping up to two and a half miles here, he's got the first time hood on to hopefully help him settle, and I think he's a really fast horse. That's his main asset, is his speed. So I think these good ground conditions at Newbury are really going to suit him, and he's about... 14 to 1 at the, t- uh, what, the time of recording, they'll be backing him each way in the 155. Oh, the gauntlet's down to Ben Lindford. 14 to 1 best bet for, for Andy Ben? Mine's probably more of a 4 to 1 shot, Dave, in the closer at Newbury on Saturday, the two mile handicap chase, and it's only money for the on fire Chris Gordon Yard, who, who just continued to go really well. And this horse has been going really well all season. A couple of wins at Plumpton and Worcester showed that he's a highly progressive uh, two mile chaser. He got stuck in the mud a bit last time at Aintree in a falsely run race behind Gunsight Ridge, but they should be going more of a gallop in this race. The ground will play to his strengths. More of a four to one shot, but I think he could shorten and, and win this. So uh, only money for Chris Gordon in 340 Newbury. Great stuff. Thanks to Ben and to Andy for their thoughts there. Ahead of, fingers crossed, a fascinating weekend of action.